ഫക്കിഹ്നാപ്പിത്തീൻ It is a surah which was revealed in Makkah. It is also known as Surah Malaika, having 45 verses, 5 stanzas, and being the 35th by the order of arrangement. The name of the surah comes from the word Fatir, where Allah is explaining an attribute just in the first verse of uh, the surah. And the time period of the surah is the second period of the surah. of the life in makka and the basic topic and the summary of the surah is that allah in the verses is warning and threatening the people who were refusing to accept the invitation of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam what he was inviting them for the belief and the faith on oneness of allah and then uh, in the verses there is a debate to logically refute all those who were finding partners and companions with Allah and uh, prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and companions they have been consoled and a glad tiding of reward hereafter to all those who stay steadfast on their belief and in their obedience bismillahir rahmanir rahim alhamdulillah all praise is due to Allah creator of the heavens and the earth who made the angels messengers having wings two or three or four he increases in creation whatever he wills indeed allah is over all things competent so this is another surah which is starting with alhamdulillah and giving the message and reminders of remembrance of allah gratitude to allah humbleness to allah and staying patient in the obedience and the path of the path of jannah so now here allah is mentioning about angels because belief on angels is an article of belief and an article of faith without believing in angels our belief will not be completed and perfected but believing in angels is not just believing in their existence we need to believe in angels knowing all their manners all their properties of and all their creation and all about their qualities and their behaviors so here allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the angels the angels who are the obedient servants of allah they are they are the they were the first beings to be created and they were created as we learn from the traditions they were created by noor they were created from noor or the light of allah and they were created before the creation of jinns and humans they are obedient for it is in their instinct they cannot err they do not disobey and to disobey or err is not instinctive for them as allah says in quran yaf'aluna ma yu'mirun they do as they are ordered so they just do not disobey and they glorify allah they remember allah they they are very frequent and excessive in the exaltations of allah 
they are abundant and they continuously are exalting and glorifying Allah and the verse which they use and they recite to glorify and exalt their Lord is subhanallah he subhanallah he biham wa bihamdihi subhanallah al azim and as Allah has mentioned themselves they say they, they said themselves nahnu nusabbihu Bihamdika wa nuqaddisulak, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we glorify you and we praise you. So why do you need to create Adam alayhi salam and a superior being? And then we learn that they prostrate and they very frequently prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As uh, we learn from a tradition that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sitting with his companions and then he asked that what I am hearing, do you hear that also? The companions answered that they did not. And then he said that uh, Prophet said that I have heard the heavens creaking. And he said that it should creak for there is no space of four fingers in the heavens where there is an angel not prostrating. So they very frequently prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then we also learn that they make tawaf. They make tawaf and they go around the Bayt al mahmur the house which is immediately above Khana Kaaba in the seventh heaven. And uh, we also learn from traditions that there daily there are 70,000 angels who go around and make tawaf of Bayt al mahmur And an angel who has done tawaf of Bayt al mahmur once has not got the second chance. So how plenty in number, how numerous the angels are. And then we also learn, <clears throat> we learn from the Quran that they run about and they are very speedily move about, move about in the universe, administering and organizing the various systems of the universe to obey and to conduct the orders of Allah. And uh, we know that they are specified angels for different creations of the universe, like there's the angel of, of the clouds and the rains. There are angels specified for supervising and controlling the rivers and the oceans and the winds and the mountains. And then there are the angels of birth and the angels of death. And there, there are specific angels we learn about from Quran and Hadith. They are mentioned. The leader of angels is Hazrat Jibreel, alayhi salam, and he used to do what? He used to bring the revelations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the prophets and messengers of Allah. And he was, he is the strongest and he is the leader of angels. And then the angel of death, Hazrat Israel. And then the angel of rain, Hazrat Mikail, the angel who is going to blow in the trumpet on the day of judgment is Hazrat Israfil. The recording angels have been called as Karam and Katibin in Quran. The questioning angels who the person will meet in the grave have been reported as, in true traditions, as Munkir and Nakir. And then the angels, the blind and the deaf angels of torments of the grave. And then the witnessing angels, which will be accompanying the bondsmen on the day of judgment. And then there are the guarding angels who protect the bondsmen from front and behind. And there are seven guarding angels for each eye. And then the angels of hell fire who Prophet Sallallahu also saw on the night of uh, Miraj. They were very harsh and strict and then soft natured and cool and humbled angels of Jannah. And then there are angels of the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, four angels still before the day of judgment, and there will be eight in number on the day of judgment. And these angels of Jannah will be the angels who will be receiving the inmates of the hell of, uh, of Jannah saying, Salamun alaikum toibutum fadkuluha. So these are the angels whom Allah is talking about here. And they were made to prostrate to Adam alayhi salam. So meaning what? That angels, however obedient and however, um, however remembrant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they might be. But still the superior being is whom is are we all are the superior beings. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning that they have wings. And the number of the wings, they vary according to the degree and the status of uh, the angels. The leader of the angels has a Jibreel, 
he was seen by Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in his actual forms twice in his life as his real form. Once was after the period when, uh, when the revolutions of the Quran had temporarily been stopped by the order of Allah. That is after the period of Fatratul Wahi, when he reports that he saw Hazrat Jibreel alayhi salam, and he was um, sitting on a chair and his wings were filling up all the space between the earth and the heaven. And the second occasion when Hazrat uh, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he saw Hazrat Jibreel Alaihi Salam was in the journey of the night. And he, there he saw him and he saw that he had 600 wings. Whatever Allah grants to people of mercy, none can withhold it. Whatever he withholds, none can release it thereafter. And he is the exalted in might and wise. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. Verse number three, O mankind, remember the favors of Allah upon you. Is there any creator other than Allah who provides for you from the heaven and earth? There is no deity except him. So how are you deluded? In this verse, Allah is ordering us to do what? Very frequently is this verse mentioned in the Quran. Allah gives us this order also, and Allah has ordered the Bani Israel also. Like in Surah Baqarah, Allah says, Ya Bani Israel, this is very frequently ordered. Allah ordered the Bani Israel, and very frequently Allah orders all of us, the reciters of Quran also. So whenever this verse comes, what do we need to do? Allah is saying, remember the blessings Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. So the first order which we learn from this is gratitude. Remember the blessings Allah has showered upon you. So stay grateful. The order is of gratitude. The second order which we can learn or acquire from this is that Allah is saying, Uskuru, mention your blessings. Mention your blessings. Keep on talking about your blessings. This is why not for the purpose of showing off or to display or to demonstrate or exhibit your blessings, blessings, but to give a reminder of gratitude to others. And then, uskuru ni'mati allati and amtu alaykum means what? Remember your blessings. Remember what you have been blessed for. But do not just try to keep on talking about and mentioning about and all the time remembering in your mind and in your hearts what you are deprived of so that you just keep on cribbing and grumbling and howling and getting upset and anxious and tense rather than remembering what you are deprived of remember what you are blessed of as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says faskuruni askurkum washkuruli wala takfuruni and another thing which we derive from this verse is that Allah says, remember and look at your own blessings. Which we have blessed on you. So means what? That Allah is ordering all of us that remember the blessings which Allah has blessed you with. Do not go around. Do not go around counting other people's blessings turning into envious and jealous people. No, see what you have yourself and looking at our own blessings will obviously save us from the malice of envy and of getting jealous of other people's blessing. Allahumma jalni sabura wa jalni shakura rabbi aini ala zikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. And if they deny you, already were messengers denied before you, and to Allah are returned all the matters. O mankind, indeed the promise of Allah is the truth. So let not the worldly life delude you, and be not deceived about Allah by the deceiver. Who is the deceiver? The shaitan, about which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has clearly repeated many times in the Quran. Innahu lakum mubin. 
Indeed, shaitan is an enemy to you. So take him as an enemy. He only invites his party to be among the companions of the blaze. So how does, how does he create his deception? Shaitan is, is the biggest deceiver. And how does he get successful in deceiving the people? Like putting ideas, giving suggestions, putting thoughts in the minds. Like life is short. This worldly life is very short. Have fun and enjoy your life. Dance, eat, rejoice, have fun. This is a short life. Then Shaitan giving suggestions and giving ideas like that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all al ghafur He is very forgiving. He will forgive everyone. Then putting ideas and thoughts like Allah, Allah, he himself says, he is al-wadud. He is the most loving. How will he, who loves the bondsman more than the parents, how will he, al-wadud, throw his bondsman in hellfire? No, he's not going to do that. You're all going to get away with hellfire. Then he comes, he comes up and suggests, you can enjoy in your youth and you can seek forgiveness in your old age. Commit a sin and then seek forgiveness. This was exact what Lee suggested the brothers of Yusuf when, he, when they were planning to throw Yusuf in the well. And then he suggests to some, did you know you, you are the people, you are the followers of Prophet you are sure to receive the intercession of the Prophet and you're going to get away and you're going to enter into Jannah saying, saying we are the believers, we are the believers, we are the followers of Prophet So, and then Shaitan comes up with the suggestion says, what are those all, there are so many around you who are committing all these sins, what are they going to do on the day of judgment? What they are going to do on the day of judgment, you can also do the same. Verse number seven, those who disbelieve will have a severe punishment and those who believe and do righteous deeds will have forgiveness and a great reward. So for the great reward of Jannah and for forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need what? We need belief as well as righteous deeds, iman and amal is waliha. Then the one to whom the evil of his deed has been made attractive, by whom? By the deceiver, by the aduv mubin, has been made attractive. So he considers it good, like the one who is rightly guided, for indeed Allah sends astray whom he wills and guides whom he wills. So do not let yourself perish over them in regret. Indeed, Allah is knowing of what they do. And it is Allah who sends the winds and they stir the clouds and we drive them to a dead land and give life thereby to the earth after its lifelessness. Thus is the resurrection. Whoever desires honor through power, then to Allah belongs all the honor. To him a sense, good speech, and righteous work raises it. But they who plot evil deeds will have a severe punishment, and the plotting of those, it will perish. So now, here in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning that there are going to be certain things which will ascend to the heavens, which will ascend to the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then mentioning that there will be certain things which will ascend the heavens, Allah mentions that there will be two things which will help them rise and ascend. So what are the things which will ascend? What rises to the heavens? Number one, the souls, all the souls of the deceased after the soul departs from the body, it ascends. Second, the supplications of the bondsmen, they rise and they ascend to the heavens and to the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And third is all the seeking of forgiveness and supplicating as for repentance is what has to ascend. We want them to ascend to the throne of Allah. Now, all these three things will be assisted 
and will be promoted in their ascent and in their rising by two. Number one will be the first formula of faith. Kalimatin, tuayyibatin. The first formula of faith and the second will be the good, the pious or the righteous deeds. We do learn regarding the souls entering the heaven that to enter the to enter the jannah the souls will enter the jannah and the souls will be made to enter the jannah and made to reside in the illusion will be what will be because purely and purely and solely because of faith because of belief and because of the pious and the righteous deeds nothing more than that and nothing short of that allah says in quran Similarly, all the supplications, and even the supplication when we are we are repenting, <coughs> or we are asking for forgiveness, is what it is a form of supplication. So, for all the supplication, the doors of heaven open and they ascend to the throne of Allah. With when when they are followed by virtuous, righteous, pious deeds, like the supplications, which inshallah I will be talking in Surah Al Mumin in detail. But supplications they are heard, they are accepted, they are granted when when they are made after the recitation of Quran, when they are made during during prostration, during salah, while we are standing and reciting in our salah, after, after the farad salah or after the completion of salah, after the Friday salah, after or in the salah of the hajjud. And then all the supplications are heard after a person makes charity while, while a person is fasting in the time of, of iftari and at the time of, um, of fasting. And, and all the supplications are heard when the person is performing Hajj, performing Umrah, or while the person is emigrating in the way of Allah, or is performing or doing Jihad. So this is all what about, what is this all about is that when a person is, or also when the person is praising Allah, glorifying Allah, exalting Allah, then after all reciting all this, even then, all the supplications and seeking of forgiveness is accepted. So this is exactly the verse is explaining that the three things rising to the heavens will be assisted in their ascent by kalimata yaba, that is belief and faith, and by the righteous deeds. Let's all announce our faith and belief and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. Rabbana. Innana amanna. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's no doubt that we have believed and we have faith. Rabbana innana amanna. Faqfir lana zanubana waqina adhaab nar. And Allah created you from dust and there and then from a sperm drop and then he made your mates and no female conceives nor does she give birth except with his knowledge and no aged person is granted additional life nor is his lifespan lessened but it is in a register indeed for that that for allah is easy verse number 20, uh, 12 and not alike are the two bodies of water one is fresh and sweet palatable for drinking this is what the river water and one is salty and bitter this is what the water of the seas and the oceans and from each that is from the rivers or from the seas and oceans and from each you eat tender meat and extract ornaments which you wear and you see the ships plowing through, in, through them that you might seek of his bounties and perhaps you will be grateful. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning that through the water of the rivers and the seas, what what extensive blessings and bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we receive. Rabbi Aini ala zikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. He causes the night to enter the day and he causes the day to enter the night and he has subjected the sun and the moon. <coughs> 
and he has subjected the sun and the moon, each running in its course for a specified term. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has subjected the sun and the moon for all of us. Why? So that we stay subjected and submitted and surrendering to all the commandments of Allah. And that's Allah says that each is running its course for a specified term. Means what? That Allah is telling all of us that we also have a specified term for this stay in this worldly life. That is Allah, your Lord. To him belongs sovereignty and those whom you invoke other than him do not possess as much as the membrane of a date seed. If you invoke them, they do not hear your supplication. And if they heard, they would not respond to you. And on the day of resurrection, they will deny your association. And none can inform you like one acquainted with all the matters. O oh, mankind, you are those in need of Allah. While Allah is free of need, the praiseworthy. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. And if he wills, he can do away with you and bring forth a new creation. And that is for Allah not difficult and no bearer of burdens will bear the burden of another and if a heavily laden a heavily laden soul calls another to carry some of its load when on the day of judgment nothing of it will be carried even if he should be a close relative you can only warn those who fear their lord unseen and have established Prayer. Allahumma ja'alna minhum Rabbi ja'alni maqim as-salati wa min zurriyati Allahumma aati nafsi taqwaha and whoever purifies himself only purifies himself for the benefit of his soul and to Allah is the final destination Allahumma ja'alni min at-tawwabina wa ja'alni min al-mutatawakhireen not equal are the blind and the seeing not nor are the darkness and the light, nor are the shade and the heat, and not equal are the living and the dead. Indeed, Allah causes to hear whom who wills, but you cannot make hear those who are in the graves. You are not but a warner. Indeed, we have sent you with the truth as a bringer of good tidings and a warner. And there was no nation, but there had passed within it a warner. And if they deny you, then already have those before them denied. Their messengers came to them with clear proofs and written ordinances and with the enlightening scriptures. Then I seized the ones who disbelieved. How terrible was my reproach. Do you not see that Allah sends down rain from the sky and we produce thereby fruits of varying colors and in the mountains are tracks white and red of varying shades and some extremely black. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. And among people and moving creatures and grazing livestock are various colors. Similarly, only those who fear Allah from among his servants who have knowledge, indeed Allah is exalted in might and forgiving. Indeed, those who recite the book of Allah and establish prayer and spend in the cause out of what which we have provided them secretly and publicly can expect a prophet that will never perish. Which prophet? The prophet of Jannah. That we may give them in full their rewards and increase for them of his bounty. Indeed, he is forgiving and appreciative. And that which we have revealed to you of the book is truth, confirming what was before it. Indeed, Allah of his servants is acquainted and seeing. Then we cause to inherit the book those we have chosen of our servants, and among them is he who wrongs himself, and among them, and among them is he who is moderate, and among them is he who is foremost in good deeds by the permission of Allah. Allah make us one of these. That inheritance is what is the great bounty. And for them are gardens of perpetual residence, which they will enter. They will be adorned therein with bracelets of gold and pearls, and their garments therein will be of silk. 
So here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning the reward of all those who were what? Who were doing fasta bikul khairat and who were doing good deeds by the orders of Allah. They will be adorned with what? With bracelets of gold and silver and pearls. Hadith tells us that these, all these bracelets and all these adornments and jewelries of the Jannah, they will, they will be, they will be, uh, they will be made to wear till the parts of the body till where the water of the wudu has reached. So where, till where the water of the wudu has reached out, this, these parts of the body will sh shine out and Prophet Sallallahu will recognize them and give them the water of the hall of Qasr and then he will intercede for them. And now when they will enter into Jannah, this wudu, this wudu will lead to what? Of letting them being adorned with all forms of ornaments of gold and silver till the water had reached their parts of body. Realizing all this and learning about all these verses and traditions from Prophet Sallallahu you know, what the companions used to do was the day while they were washing, they were washing their arms. They used to wash them well above their elbow, like washing half of their upper arm as well. And when they were washing their feet up to their ankles, they did not stay till the ankles. They used to wash like half of their shins also, desirous of all these extended ornaments of Jannah. And they will say, after they've received all these ornaments of Jannah, they will say, Alhamdulillah, praise to Allah, who has removed from us all sorrows. Indeed, our Lord is forgiving and appreciative. So this is the verse we learn by the Sunnah, by the Prophet of Sunnah, uh, that he used to recite this when he used to receive a good news. He who has settled us in the home of duration out of his bounty, there, there touches us not in any fatigue, and there touches us not in any weariness of the mind. And for those who disbelieve will be the fire of hell. Death is not decreed for them, so they may die, nor will it be tormented, nor, nor will its torment be lightened for them. Thus do we recompense every ungrateful one. Allahumma jalni sabura wa jalni shakura. And they will cry out therein, our Lord, remove us. We will do righteousness other than what we were doing. But did we not grant you life enough for whoever would remember therein to remember? And the warners had come to you. So taste the punishment, for there is not for the wrongdoers any helper. Indeed, Allah is knower of the unseen aspects of heaven and earth. Indeed, he is knowing of that within the breasts. It is he who has made you successors upon the earth, and whoever disbelieves upon him will be the consequence of his disbelief, and the disbelief of the disbelievers does not increase them in the sight of their Lord except in hatred, and the disbelief of disbelievers does not increase them except in loss. Say, how have you considered? Have you considered your partners whom you invoke besides Allah? Continuously, these verses are inviting the societies towards faith and believe in oneness of Allah and leave all forms of polytheism. Show me, show me what they have created from the earth or have they partnership with him in heavens or have we given them a book so they might, they are standing on evidence they are formed. No, rather the wrongdoers do not promise each other except delusion. Indeed, Allah holds the heaven and the earth, lest they cease. And if they should cease, no one could hold them in place after him. Indeed, he is forbearing and forgiving. And they swore by Allah their strongest oaths that if a warner came to them, they would be more guided than any one of the previous nations. But when a warner came to them, it did not increase them except in aversion. Why? Due to arrogance in the land and plotting of evil, but the evil plotting does not encompass except its own people. Then do they await except the way of the former people? But you will never find in the way of Allah any change, and you will never find in the way of Allah any alteration. 
Have they not traveled through the land and observed how was the end of those before them? And they were greater than them in power, but Allah is not to be caused failure by anything in the heaven or, or on the earth. Indeed, he is ever knowing and competent. And if Allah were to impose blame on the people and for what they have earned, he would not leave upon the earth any creature, but he defers them for a specified term. And when their time comes, then indeed Allah has ever been of his servants seeing. Allahumma hasibna hisabin yasira, rabbana la tuachizna in nasina au achtuana. Rabbi ghfir warham wa anta khayru rahimin.